Hello and welcome to the Q&A. I haven't done a Q&A in a very, very long time, and I just thought, you know, why not? Let's do a, you know, a quick one. I got a good amount of questions. I won't have time to do all of them, um, but I did get a couple double ups. So obviously, any questions that I was asked more than once, I will answer, and I'll answer as many as I can now. So hopefully, you guys enjoy this. Without wasting any more time, we're going to get into our first question from Darth Ravik who asks, would you like to see The Old Republic as a trilogy? Personally, when it comes to what I want to see from Star Wars now, I want to see things that weren't seen at all in Legends. Um, I think the you know Legends continuity has a lot of really great stuff, and I think The Old Republic is one of them. But I think the biggest problem with the sequel trilogy is that people had certain expectations based on what happened in Legends. So I think we should go to an era that has been completely unexplored. Obviously, we're not going to be able to, you know, find an era necessarily that's got nothing. But I want to go somewhere where basically it's a clean slate. They can take the story wherever they want and no one's going to be upset because it didn't match something of the past. And as much as I love the Old Republic, and I, I really do love the um, the MMO, I think that because it's got such a great story there, it would be almost you know counterproductive to get a story in there since we've already got a story there, um, and now it's time for something new. But at the same time, I would love to see a trilogy or something in the new canon in that era. So yes, that'd be great. So I hope that answers your question. But yeah, you know. I do want to see more in that type of era, but I don't want to see necessarily the Old Republic because I um, I want it to be a story that's been untouched so people aren't upset and we can sort of, you know, all enjoy it together. Mace Windu asks, What is your favourite overall lightsaber style and colour, Legends Counted? I usually go for, you know, the almost pretty bland blue lightsaber. Um, I love the design of Obi-Wan's lightsaber, and by extension, um, Luke's episode 6 lightsaber. It, it looks very, you know, sleek and streamlined to me. So I guess my favorite overall lightsaber, um, I guess lightsaber, would be Obi-Wan's lightsaber, because it's the blue and it's that style. But I also really love the dark saber. Um, I haven't really been getting much into Mandalorian, you know, like... I know that there's massive fan base behind the Mandalorians, and there have been for years, but until the show, The Mandalorian, I never really cared that much. I mean, but I did love the Clone Wars. I love that the, the way that the Clone Wars represented the Mandalorians, and, you know, I sort of cared, but now that The Mandalorians come out, I really care about The Mandalorians. I, I really love, you know, almost everything about them, and I think the Darksaber is such a great, like, I guess, symbol um, for, you know, the, the way that the new canon represents Man uh, Mandalorians. I think it's like a really... It's it's a lightsaber that really drives story, which is kind of strange, because, you know, for other characters, for other stories, lightsabers are just sort of a weapon, you know, discounting um, at least the, the Skywalker saber. But the Darksaber really drives story beats. It's really significant in-universe, which I think makes it really significant for the audience as well. Um, and spoilers for the last episode of The Mandalorian, I got extremely excited during that episode when we saw Moff Gideon use the, um, the Darksaber to get out of that TIE fighter. Just the amount of excitement that it brings for the audience and the amount of weight that it holds in the universe, I think, makes the Darksaber really special. So I think aesthetically my favorite would be Obi-Wan's lightsaber, but in a story, it would have to be the Darksaber. A couple of people asked me about the future of meme compilation and if I was going to make any more, and the answer is yes. I think a lot of people thought that meme compilation 6 was going to be the end of the series because I called it Ultimate Edition, and you know, the reason I called it that was simply because I want to give every meme compilation a title from now on. I feel that it sort of gives them a bit more personality. They're all very different, um, and when I'm making them I sort of have different mindsets going into making them. So. I didn't mean that to be a conclusion. Um, I guess with the Rise of Skywalker, everyone sort of in, is in conclusion mindset. So no, I will be making episode seven and eight and however much longer. But you know, um, when that will be, I don't really know. It sort of I like having good gaps between meme compilation videos because they're the hardest to make, and I really want 
every meme compilation to jump up in quality, you know? And for that to happen, I need time to hone my skills as an editor, you know? I think for me, when it comes to meme compilation, um, the priority for me is almost quality over humor, which sounds weird because they're meant to be funny, and I hope they are, but I, you know, I want to make sure that every time I'm making a meme compilation, it jumps up in quality, editing-wise, and, you know, all that sort of, sort of thing. So, um, I guess, um, in a way, I'm sort of making more videos and trying to make sure that when I do feel ready to make the next meme compilation video, um, I not only feel burnt out, like, don't feel burnt out from meme compilation, but I also feel that I've improved enough as an editor to warrant the next episode's existence. So, I have a feeling the next episode will probably come out in a couple of months, or at least I'll start working in a couple of months. They do take a lot of time, especially when I'm, you know, doing other things in my life. So, um, <laughs> I do thank you guys for your patience. I know a lot of you have come here just for the meme compilation series, but I hope you can find enjoyment in the other types of content, because, um, you know, not only do I want it to jump up in quality, but I also um, want to make other sorts of content. So, um, you know, I want to explore other things. So there will be more meme compilations, but there's going to be a bit more in the middle of, you know, you know, meme compilation six and seven. Diego asks, what is your favorite Star Wars duel in the entire franchise? Um, this is a really hard question. Um, a lot of you might not know, but my favorite part of Star Wars is like the Jedi and Sith lore and lightsaber duels tend to be very important moments in those lore. So they sort of have a lot of significance when it comes to um, that part of the story. And I love so many of them. You know, I, I think there are very few lightsaber duels I actively dislike, in, you know, including the Clone Wars and Rebels. Um, but for me, I am, you know, I've got two basically even contenders. And ironically, they're both from Star Wars Rebels, which a lot of people think have the worst lightsaber duels. And visually... Yeah, but these two for me have a big significance story-wise, and that would be Ahsoka versus Darth Vader. Um, if you've seen the show, you know, Clone Wars and Rebels, you'll know why this is so significant. You know, Ahsoka being um, Anakin's apprentice, dueling him right after finding out that Anakin is Vader. And the second is also Obi-Wan versus Maul, simply because I love Obi-Wan, and I love the conflict that he had with Maul during the Clone Wars, and the simplicity of the duel, the the just immediate end, it... I, I almost can't express how perfect that is to me because it shows just how much Obi-Wan has honed the Force. He is a Jedi. He is a light side practitioner. He doesn't need to do flips and things to, you know, defeat his enemies. He just centers himself. And while Maul's got all this rage in him, he just strikes him down with, you know, that... Um, Jedi-like calmness. That I just, I just love that moment, and I love, um, you know, the subversion of expectations, where everyone was expecting this huge battle to end the conflict that's been going on for twenty years, but it was a, you know, five-second thing. And as well, the details in that duel are just so dense. If you, you know, don't really know much about that duel, go watch an analysis of it because it's, it, it's got a lot of, um, it's got a lot of things, you know, callbacks and things in it, even though it's about five seconds. So. Soka versus Darth Vader and um, Obi Wan versus Maul are fantastic to me. Source twenty four asks, "Do you think we'll ever see Ben Solo alive again in any canon material set after Episode nine? I think not. I mean, he's he's dead. <laughs> I think they will definitely see more Ben Solo. I, you know, he did fade into the Force, meaning he will likely become a Force ghost. But at the same time, it's just you know." Like, I don't know exactly where we would see him. I think we're not going to see much content after episode 9 for a while now. Um, I think they're going to wait probably for a couple of years before exploring that error again. So, you know, I wouldn't hold your breath about seeing Ben Solo. I certainly wouldn't hold your breath about seeing him alive again. Buttertroop asks, Who do you think is the most underrated character in Star Wars, and do you think they are deserving of a solo film, show, or game? I think the most underrated Star Wars character is probably Ahsoka Tano, which might confuse some because people love her, but not the, you know, I guess the more mainstream crowd. 
people that have seen Clone Wars and Rebels love Ahsoka for obvious reasons if you've seen the shows, but a lot of people just, I guess, seem to be purists to the films, which is fine, but... I think that they look almost down upon Ahsoka as this, you know, character, because she, you know, she's one of the few characters who originates and, um, you know, basically just stays in animated shows. So for the people that refuse to watch animated shows because they, you know, whatever they assume, you know, they're for kids or whatever, they will never really see this character. So I don't think she's necessarily deserving of a solo film. I don't think that would really, you know, do well for Disney. I think that'd be a really poor business decision on their part. Because, again, a lot of people don't watch the shows, so why would they go to see a film about a character they've never heard of? But I would love to see her in live action. I think that would really, I guess, validate the character within those who haven't seen the shows. And maybe, you know, bring some of those people who don't like watching the shows to give them a go. Because I think the, you know, I think Clone Wars is probably one of the best parts of all the Star Wars, best, you know, canon stories. And a lot of people miss out on it just because they assume it's for kids. So I think seeing Ahsoka in live action would be really good, but I don't necessarily think it'd be, you know, it would be wise to have her in her own solo film. But, you know, you never know. I think it'd be cool to see regardless because, you know, I think Ahsoka's a great character. Bad Clips asks, what is your favorite Styles movie from each trilogy? Um, this is, you know, we'll start with the prequel trilogy. I watched The Phantom Menace the other day and I actually really, really liked it, which is something that a lot of people are probably going to be a bit shocked by. And obviously, I love Revenge of the Sith. And in a way, I honestly can't really... I mean, both of them are almost tied. They're so they're both really good. Um, but I think Revenge of the Sith just beats it. Um, but all I know is that I really don't like Attack of the Clones. I think Attack of the Clones is easily my least favorite Styles movie overall. In the original trilogy, Return of the Jedi is my favorite. Um, I think this is almost the same as the prequel trilogy, um, where, like, I know Return of the Jedi isn't the objective best film in the three, um, but I just like it, and I have memories of it, so Return of the Jedi is my favourite original trilogy movie, and sequel trilogy movie, by a long shot, is The Last Jedi. I, you know, I've talked about this a lot on the channel, I love The Last Jedi, I think it's, you know, just, I, I think it's easily the best sequel trilogy film and i love the first two sequel trilogy films i don't love the rise of skywalker the rise of skywalker is just sort of okay cool elite asks what do you think of the sequels do you think they're any good i think that episode seven is excellent i think episode eight is even more excellent and i think episode nine ruins both of them <laughs> obviously nothing can take away the fact that i really enjoy episode eight and i think Nine is an okay film on its own, but I feel like it completely ruins the synergy that the sequel trilogy once potentially had. I think if episode nine actually respected the choices that Ryan Johnson made and tried to, you know, in some way follow up the story that he made, I know a lot of people don't think that was even possible, but I think if, if nine at least made an effort to sort of finish the story that they were trying to tell, um, maybe maybe the trilogy would have had a bit of synergy and the trilogy would work as three movies. So as it stands, the sequel trilogy to me is three films, two of them being great, one of them being all right, making a trilogy that's okay. I really wish I could say it's a trilogy that was great. I think that for me, I was so excited for Nine because I loved both of the previous movies and I thought it was going to bring it home, but um, it's clear that Disney got scared. They, you know, they got scared of all the backlash that they got from The Last Jedi, and they didn't finish the story in the way that they were before. And I think it's really upsetting because Star Wars has always been about bold creators making bold stories, but that's why Episode Nine doesn't feel like almost a Star Wars movie for me because every other movie, you know, love it or hate it, it's got, you know, this vision that that, you know, is unapologetic to itself. But episode nine doesn't feel like it has that same vision. It feels like it's just, you know, damage control for a film that half of us hated and half of us liked. So for the half of us that liked it, it feels like they're just, you know, cowards. So <laughs> to answer your very simple question with a big long answer, it's kind of complicated. I think that the sequels hold up you know, each sequel film holds up all right on its own. Um, but as a trilogy, I don't know, you know, 
how I will see the trilogy as a whole moving forward. Maybe with time, I might find it really, you know, great. Like, they will work together great. Maybe in time, I won't. So, I think right now, though, the sequels are at the very least good. I'm not sure how to read this name, but I'm going to say Olivin? Olivin. Olivin asks, how do you watch Star Wars? Um, Or he asks, what order do I watch Star Wars in? Um, I've watched it in a couple of orders, but I've got to say my favourite's probably release order. You know, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 3, 7, 8, 9. Um, with probably putting Rogue One and, and Solo about where they were. Um, they'll put, maybe, watch them after the prequels. So you've got 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 3, Rogue One, Solo, or Solo, Rogue One, and then the sequel films. Um, but I think chronological order could work too. I've never actually... I don't know if I've really watched the whole thing in chronological order um, because I normally just default back to release order so right now it's probably release order but you know maybe I'll give chronological order a try I think it has its benefits but you know I'm used to release order because that's what I used to watch it um, how I used to watch it as a kid I'd like to thank you all very that is a lot of birds I would like to thank you all very, very much for watching this video. I know for a lot of people this might be a more boring type of video, and I have got real content coming soon, but I'm having some copyright issues and, you know, that sort of thing, so I'm trying to get that resolved. But for the most part, I'd like to thank you all very much for watching this video. I'm sorry if my um, answers to these questions were too long-winded or, who knows, maybe they're too short, but either way, thank you to everyone who asked questions. Thank you to everyone who watched this video. New content is coming very soon. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you have a great day.